Welcome back to my hometown. Thanks for taking a little time to join me today. Today my guests are the owners of Maddox Legacy um, Hats and uh, Boot Shine and, and Hat um, Shaping and have Brett and Nicole Maddox with me today. Thank you both for joining me today. Um, I'm glad both of you decided, not just Nicole, just to make you Brett. Um, <laughs> so well, we're sitting here in Maddox Legacy, um, just about opened up about a month ago um, with a new brand um, using your dad's legacy, um, your last name to um, build a quality hat that's going to um, be around for generations. Um, so first I want to kind of get to know you because I think all small businesses, um, they're often started because there's a passion um, behind it. It's never we go into it thinking we're going to make tons of money. It's about what the passion is. So first of all, I want to get to kind of know y'all and then we'll kind of go into what the business is and where you plan on going. So Brett, um, as as we talked earlier, um, well, both of you aren't from Bowie. No, no sir. Um, but we've uh, but we're on my hometown uh, because I think there's qualities that make people make it my hometown. So Brett, you're from Wyoming. Yes, I grew up in Wyoming. Um, there, we grew up rodeoing, and I played sports. Just kind of, we had uh, my family had ranches and stuff like that. Um, after I graduated, I rodeoed for a little while and uh, kind of this kind of wanted to figure out what I wanted to do with life. And so that's when my dad had a successful business that he started uh, in Fort Worth, cowboy hat store. And so I wanted to go to work for him and asked him if I could come to Texas and do that around. Uh, when I was like 21. And, and those for those that don't know, your dad was owner of American Hat Company. Mm -hmm. um, so did that originate in Fort Worth? Because uh, now, now the factory is the only factory here. It actually originated in Houston, Texas. Okay. And when he got it, it was in Conroe. So we were there for a couple years. But before he got American Hat, um, he owned a store called the Best Hat Store, which is still in Fort Worth today. So before that, we had the Best Hat Store and that's where i went to work for him and it, we carried every kind of different hat and just tried to have the best kind of quality and then eventually we started making our own hats there like one or two a day and um, learned that kind of stuff uh, we did road shows where we'd go to all the horse shows the nfr uh fort worth stock show all across the country and uh be there and shape up and uh build a customer relationship and then when he had the chance in 2003 best hat was going good and he had a chance uh he always liked american hat had a chance to purchase that then we had to we were really cut thin because we had the store and then me and one of my buddies went to fort worth i mean went to conroe and i lived there for a couple years in the factory learning learning all about that and trying to get that up and up and going yes. how the hats are made and you know, how the hats are made uh, uh, <clears throat> going out and talking to because actually American hat was very successful and then they went under and so I would go back into the stores and they said oh I don't want American hat this I said no before your dad had taken no the this coffee. is when it when he took it over yeah. yeah but they went under and my dad bought it hmm. and so I went into stores and I would go around and say you know hey we have American and they go oh, I don't want American hat and I said no, it's different now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is what we're doing. So that was a big, it was scary because I'd go in there and they'd try to say, no, get out of here. And then after time, they started to carry our product again, build that trust. And um, so the reasons they were saying no, was it because of it went <clears throat> under customer service? The the, mm -hmm. the product had changed or they were concerned about that? Or? You know, it, um, the, the the previous owners, they did some some bad decisions, bringing in some money people, and they just were losing. They didn't know they were losing some money, and uh, it started to just just snowball on them. And so what they did is they didn't ship any any product. They actually just kept their workers that were there for thirty years. So they were taking. They were taking money, doing that stuff, but not sending any product. And if mm -hmm. they did, it was bad, and it was just 
all the crap that they had. So uh, they really made the customers at that time upset. So we had to go in, rebrand, and redo the product. And it took probably five, six years to where we had a good name and had a good taste out there uh, to the to the store store owners. And is that at that time? Is that going out and actually talking to those store owners and visiting oh, with yes. them? Because, what, 2003, yeah, 2004, 2003. 2005, I mean, we're not really social media, so that's no. pound on the pavement. Oh, yeah. I'd have Being a, a salesman. Yeah, I had a map, you know what I mean? We didn't uh -huh. have the Garmin or nothing. I had a map, and there'd be this uh, little store in the middle of nowhere, and I'd drive the wrong way three or four times, and I'd find <laughs> it, and then I'd go in, and, and I'd just visit with them, you know, and mm -hmm. tell them, and show them the new product and say how sorry we are and say this is how it's going to be and my dad had a good good name in the western industry he was a boot salesman and for Tony Lama and so a lot of customers uh, knew him and knew his reputation so it took a while but we started getting the momentum mm -hmm. know, and it started growing and, and I think it's important saying your dad had a good reputation it's all about networking yes um, especially relationship yes that's sales um, for sure. Yes, I mean that's a that's a you know we that's a and we we talk about a small community. It's about the relationships in our community, the relationships we make with others. Because yes, we can put things on social media, but it just comes across different when we talk face to face. Yeah, when like a text is <laughs> different. You don't know how it's going to. Yes, it's someone else is going to perceive it. Because mm -hmm. so, yeah. they they enter their own attitude and yeah, well, voice how they're to feeling it. that time. That yes, time of day. I can't so, believe they said that to me, but yeah. really they didn't mean anything. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um, American Hat Company's uh, rebranded, up and going. Um, when did it move to Bowie? I would say maybe 2006, 2007. Dad had some good friends in Bowie that were on the uh, economic development. Mm -hmm. um, and they had the building that used to be the Hager Gene uh, mm -hmm. plant that was vacant at the time. And so we wanted to be closer to Fort Worth because we're so far, we're five hours, you know, from Fort Worth. So we wanted to be closer and we came in and looked at that and economic development in the city helped us a lot too. And we just found this was a great place to be. Mm -hmm. And then, so for the last 10 years, you've been in and out of Bowie going different. <coughs> yes. D depending on where you were needed for the. For, yes. And uh, did like the best hat store, but mostly American. Um, we would do markets you know that was our big thing with american hat denver market all the all the retailers would be there and we'd wholesale our product um then i would travel like south texas um at one point i was national salesman so over the salesman but we weren't that big at that time um but yeah i had a relationship with pretty much all of our retailers at one time you know or been in their store talked with them on the phone, mm -hmm. you know, just, and that's what it's about, uh, just building those relationships, like you said. And then, Nicole, you're not from a sales background. No, sir. You're from a medical background. Yes, sir. So you've been a nurse for 27 years. Yes, sir. Yes. Now retired from, do you ever retire from nursing, or you just? I don't know. I think it's in your blood. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> the helping part, she's a helper, you, you know you what got, I mean? You want to fix everything, yeah. you know? So do you feel like you're a fixer? I mean, I like. I do, like I want to, I, I always want to. I'm a nurturer and a fixer and she wants to make everything right. You want to make everything right. And I think that's just a nurse's nature. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I was, you know, I taught uh, nursing at Tarleton and then I worked for Texas Health Resources for you know, like 17 years. And then I worked for Lake Granbury Medical Center for six years, uh, maybe seven. Um, with that being said, when my father-in-law got sick, um, I was, he requested, he asked for it if it was okay if I was his hospice nurse. And so at that point I was not working, um, cause it was, I took care of him. Um, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Hardest thing probably I've ever done, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had it any other way. And he so. wanted her there to be mm -hmm. there. He, you could see, I mean, he was a tough man, a positive man, but still scary. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He wanted yeah, someone scary. there that was nurturing and knew that had his his right and his you know his and, and feelings he, and, mm -hmm. you know, even at the end of his life his back. yeah we were we were all still a big a big family at the time and um um everybody was there 
uh, Brett's stepmother and Brett's half sisters, and so we were all there for the end of life, and that was important. Mm -hmm. And those things I would I would, regardless of things and family dynamics that have changed since the passing of my father-in-law, those are things that I would never change. Mm -hmm. I think it was good for everybody to experience, you know, and be there. Um, like I said, none of it was ever easy, mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah. But I, re I remember like when dad, you know, when he was going into hospice, I was like, you know, I cried and I held him and I said, wow. And he said, this ain't just nothing but a thing, you know, mm -hmm. this is just a new thing I'm going through. And that's how he was. I mean, everything was just, just an adventure. Nothing but a thing. Yeah. It's okay. yeah. So just I'm a like, new thing. Just what a guy, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I couldn't have done that. I'd be weeping mm -hmm. myself. So it was, he was quite a man. One of the days I will, we were at the hospital, um, it was just he and I there, and we, we were talking, and um, he really thought that, um, this was right before they put him into hospice, but he really thought that we were, he was going to go to Egypt for a trial, and um, he kept telling me, was it Egypt or Israel? Or, Israel. No, Israel. And so he said... For a new breakthrough through treatment. Breakthrough treatments. Mm, yeah. And so anyway, he kept telling me, you know, you and I were going to go do this. And, you know, I was scared to death. I'd never been out of the country before. I mean, we went to Costa Rica for... Um, but other than that, I'd never been out of the country. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking to myself, oh, my goodness. Like, I was mortified. I was terrified. And I would have never said no, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, but with that being said, uh, you know, I think that the... The physicians uh, really gave us a strong look on uh, reality at that point, and I think you're always in some type of denial. Um, his biggest fear when um, he knew that we he was at the end of his life was having to tell Brett. That was his biggest fear, mm -hmm. and, and he told me that. And he was worried because he said, Brett's, you know, where he's my best friend, I mean, Teenage boy, has you know, or college mm -hmm. kid, whatever. I mean, they had their differences for sure. They had their off and ons, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but when it all came down to it, he he had a fear of having to be honest with Brett about the end of his life. Just and worrying about where I would go, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, or what without him there as a as someone as that a mentor might rock, and you know? a rock, and, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, so that day, he pretty much just said, I'm okay. I'm okay because I know that Brett is okay. Mm -hmm. and because Brett he has you. And, and the girl, you know, our girls. And, and he told me that. And it was an emotional day, but it was also, I think he felt like a million pounds had been lifted off too. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that he could, he could be honest with that. He was the kind of man that would always say, oh, it's fine. I'm good, you know. Mm -hmm. so. It's all good. What, what, what's probably one of the biggest lessons you learned from your dad? Honesty. You know, I remember one time we got a pizza from, I don't know, if it was Do if it was Domino's, and we paid <clears throat> so much for it. Well, we got a free one. We were like, yeah, yeah, you know, in the type of, and he was cussing us because, <laughs> well, you should have paid that. You should have, you know, I've always been, and I'll tell you what, hard work, you know, hard work. And he wasn't the hardest worker. He worked smart. He was smart. not physically hard. Work, no, but very just very He was the smartest worker because he, he wasn't was, working hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> smart worker. And the relationships, you mm -hmm. know. He would treat everybody the same. It didn't matter what walk of life. That's one thing that we're trying to do with art. But he would treat the, the, or the, the, anybody the, yeah. just the same. Have a conversation with them. No one was better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, he loved everybody, and so, yeah. And, and so following his, his passing, you went back to nursing yes. for a little bit, and you stepped away from American Hat Company mm -hmm. um, for, for different reasons, um, and that was four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so when did planning for Maddox's legacy um, come into play? When was that, you know, when you think, you know, this is something we want to do, um, you know, and what we want from it. When did that plan? Because this, um, it takes a lot of planning because your hats, you have a maid. Um, there's a lot that goes into what you have. Yes. It, you know, we sat down as a family. Well, your father passed away in September of 2019. And I stayed with American 
through through December of 2020, and then I stepped away and we did some contract work, which is just all, and kind of had an opportunity to move and go do something there. And we sat down as a family and said, hey, do we want to sell our house? Do we want to go? And our girls really like it here and they've built relationships. And Nicole said, you know, I'll pick up different shifts. So, you know, we'll make this work. And I said, okay, we're gonna do a hat store here and you know like with the bodies and getting the different stuff and doing that mm -hmm. it uh it takes time and it takes six to eight months you know almost um and uh so it's then with rebuilding the store and doing that different stuff this store we totally remodeled um it took probably a year year and a half of planning and working with the hat makers, uh, working with the hat suppliers to get the best material we could, to get the best furs, and to make our store very comforting, very alluring, and uh, making everything we wanted the right way, the customer service. Um, so we, we think we got to that point. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're learning more as we go. Yeah. Be because you, your hats are, are made especially for uh, Maddox Legacy, mm -hmm. they're not they're custom made th for us. Nobody yep. can else and, can. You no, know, and they're handmade by one guy. Um, so all your hats are <clears throat> handmade. Are handmade. Our well, our pure beavers are handmade. Uh huh. Our, we've got fifty eggs. We've got a. Well, we don't do eggs. We have, so we have a pure beaver that is handmade, and then we have what's called a beaver seventy that's handmade, and then our straws um, come from a. Um, hat company in East Texas that is an actual family owned business also and they private label for us. And um, they do our 50. They do our beaver 50s, 50s and our beaver 20s. 20s. Yeah. So how long does it take to get a hat made? Like when they're made from by hand? You know there is in a, in a felt hat there's over 250 steps making one. So they with the fur it's like a cotton candy machine. Mm -hmm. So they'll have that fur floating around and it'll come down on a big cone and it's moisture on the cone and they'll put the blend of the fur if it's if it's rabbit or if it's beaver or whatever uh, the more beaver you have the better the hat and they'll put it it'll come down on this wet cone and then it's from pressure and heat and it's just a felting process and they learned that in the biblical times where they would put wool between their sandals when they were walking thousands of miles or whatever, mm -hmm. and they'd get there and it'd be felted together. So mm -hmm. all it is, is just with pressure and heat and cooling and pressure, but there's nothing like no glue, no, no something to hold it together. Mm -hmm. It's just intertwined. And so when you look at wool, or wool is the cheapest, and then rabbit, and then beaver's the best, but you look at wool and rabbit under a microscope, it's intertwined, but it's going to get loose with time, you know, mm -hmm. on weaves. Now, uh, beaver hair is intertwined, but it's got barbs at the end of it. So it gets better and better with time, just like one. Mm -hmm. So that's, and it's, you know, waterproof, that kind of stuff, to, to the point. Mm -hmm. yes. So the hat's going to last <coughs> a long time. Yes. Because I'm assuming um, that a beaver hat is not, I have no idea about hats. Okay. I, I never. <laughs> yeah, I, I wore one when I was in like high school. But I have no idea. Oh, yeah. So, um, so, so it's so it's not going to be a cheap hat. No, uh, um, but know, it's going to be a hat that's going to last. last you. This is a hat that's going to last you a lifetime. This is where we say we want you to build your legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's yeah. an heirloom that yeah, you it's can pass down. For generation to generation, you know, when you buy a good one like this, this one runs. This is our pure beaver, and it runs about fourteen hundred, but it'll last you forever. You won't have to buy this hat again you can buy a different color mm -hmm. but and if it does get dirty whatever you come in we can shape it up clean it our hats we can shape it for free clean it for free so yeah it's uh it's just like you get what you pay for mm -hmm. and one thing that we pride ourselves in is we're going to have the best product that there is and the best customer service and that's how dad was you know you have the best product best customer service you can't go wrong mm -hmm. yeah stick to your word Yep. And do you feel big responsibility with the name of Maddox Legacy? Not only do you have that, but on the back of your building, I believe you have uh, 
a mural of your dad. Dad and I. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a, yeah, it I mean, that's me, a huge, uh, you know, I pull, when I pull in, in the morning, it makes me excited. You know, mm -hmm. it just makes me think, okay, he's watching, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I get a kick out of seeing it every day, but just what he did with, I mean, he left home when he was 15 and he made his own legacy for us to be comfortable and for us to have something to go after, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And uh, every day we need to live up to that and what would he do? You know, that's what we're trying to do. Um, sometimes you get bigger and bigger and bigger and you don't take care of the small mom and pops and I'm seeing that nowadays and that's where we are. We want to stay true to who got you on the map. Stay true to every person that comes in the store. And if they can't afford a pure beaver, we've got a straw, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, or if they need just their hat shaped up, or if they just want to come in and sit and talk, you know what I mean? That's what it's about, building the relationships. Mm -hmm. There's so many business decisions sometimes that Brett and I are like, uh, what would Papa Maddox do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so we have to go back to the drawing board or we're like, okay, what would he, how would he handle this? Or, you know, some things are... And we're learning as you go, you know. Yeah, I mean, lots of things are... I've never been on the owning side, you know. I just was at the side where I'd go sell them and I didn't have to worry about the money part of it. Mm -hmm. So we're learning and... we got a great business consultant that's helped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She um, has been, been amazing. Uh, yes, Tesoro Design. She... Um, Help She's design. always been in the Western industry, but so help design the store, the store the layout. She and I mm -hmm. did the layouts and did the decor and um, but like the website. The web, she did all the media. website, social media, social media launch. Which she mm -hmm. has taught our girls a lot on the social media side, good, mm -hmm. bad, ugly, you know, all all of that. Um, and then she, we, I just had a meeting all morning with her. We have lots of, lots of meetings and lots of coachings and, um, what is our, um, projections and what is, where do we see Maddox legacy in three months from now and six months from now in three years from now, we have goals. Mm -hmm. We have short-term goals and we have long-term goals and, um, our I'm proud of our, I'm so proud of our girls too. They stepped up and done a lot of social media stuff, know how to run the registers. They probably spent 10 hours. Maybe 12. 12 hours yeah. with a professional boot shiner that's been doing it forever. And I mean, they put in the time, the work and. They, they didn't can, think that was too cool in the beginning. <laughs> but yeah. they can shine boots as good as anybody. And that opening weekend, they each made a hundred dollars tips. So wow, for shining boots. girls, yeah. Uh -huh. so. And that was literally for like two hours. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so they're like, that's, that's not Friday. so bad. No, <laughs> yeah. for one day for about two hours, uh -huh. they each made about a hundred. And bucks. they picked up. You know, we don't have a lot, but the boutique, boutique stuff. They picked that out, and they go through that. And, and that's the their jewelry. deal. You know, mm -hmm. they're a little. They call it Soli. So it's S O for Sophie because our girls' names are Sophie and Lily. Yep. So S O for Sophie and L I for Lily. So Soli Boutique, but. Sure. They, uh, they really, the, the whole boot shine and, you know, it's a lost art. Mm -hmm. Same thing as hat shaping. It's a lost art, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Um, Brett's been teaching both girls how to shape. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, that shaping was one of the hardest selling them. I mean, you learn your product, you know your product and sell. That's easy, but to shape, it's a, it took me, I wasn't an artist, you know, mm -hmm. and it took me a long time to learn how to shape and shape correctly. When we got the factory, I would shape, you know, a bunch of hats every day. And that helped me so much instead of just one in front of a customer and kind of do it right and mm -hmm. not or mess up the hat. But it is an art and it takes time. And um, so. So are you the only hat shaper? Yes, that? yes. And you know, it's just us right now. For now. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we are. That goes back to those big goals. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Big it, goals and dreams. And, and we shared with me earlier that one of the goals is that you keep it uh, affordable and able for small mom and pop mm -hmm. stores. Um, because I think so often they get left behind. Oh, yeah. Um, and you they're know, the ones that put you here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, that's that's who got dad into business, you know what I mean? And got him building American Hat. He'd get in this small store and then this small store. And then so, <coughs> yeah. And, and your hat, since we are in Bowie. 
and we are the jackrabbits. Yep. Right. So inside your hat, you have a jackrabbit. Yeah, right? jackrabbit is our, and like, like a mine uh -huh. right there. Yeah. You know, in our pure beaver. It has our regular uh, logo. Uh huh. Just the Maddox Legacy. Uh -huh. And then in our. Uh, in the beaver 50, 50 and the yeah. beaver 20, it has a jackrabbit because it has some rabbit fur in there. Uh -huh. And then our buckle set. On actually, our pure beaver, has got a rabbit. So, on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so it has it's a jackrabbit cool. on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, yeah, we thought it meant to be in the jackrabbits. Our it's girls are cool. athletes and they are a bit, we are definitely, you know, jackrabbit, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, jackrabbit fans for sure. Mm -hmm. And we, Brett and I both do a lot of volunteering at the school, <laughs> a lot of volunteering in the community. Uh, Maddox Legacy does a whole lot of uh, PR and for our kids and, I mean, you know, and, and we were always willing to help out no matter where, athletic booster clubs, no matter what it is. And benefits our community we're gonna we're definitely gonna be there and be behind it mm -hmm. for sure that doesn't mean Maddox legacy will always say yes to all your all, <laughs> yeah. all, all, when you come right. come That's looking it. for money because yeah. um, you may hit them at the end of a budget <laughs> yeah. and yeah. so yes. when they say you know sorry yeah. um yeah. so it's not open wallet but open season to remind two. me of that some days yeah. i'm like she oh, but it's, no. i can't say no to those they're so cute you know yeah. so that that's a tough one for me but so has it been super helpful to have uh, a business consultant, somebody to kind of ground you sometimes? Because I think as a new business owner, we get all excited. We have all these ideas, and we just want to go crazy. Okay. Is it good to have that to oh, ground oh. you and bounce ideas off? Because that's really it's been unbelievable. And I think she's the one that's got bigger dreams sometimes than we do too. She <laughs> she sees the potential. She definitely sees the potential in Brett and all his dreams. And, um, and I think one of the biggest parts was knowing when to launch your brand and knowing to launch it once and to launch it right, where we would have done it several different times or too early or doing doing that, having the right timing. Was that hard to wait? <laughs> it like was, to yeah, launch? Yeah, because we're like, hey, we know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. so many things that we wanted to like put on social media and, and say, and she was like, nope. It's not the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we, we're, we've got a photo shoot. We've got a content shoot. We've got all these things that we need to do before we launch. And, I was, you know, Brett and I were just so anxious. And Brett had finally um, got his passion back. Mm -hmm. And um, that's an emotional one for, for me, for sure, um, because I had seen... Uh, you know, getting a little personal. I seen Brett hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. and that's hard as a wife. Um, and it's tough for my family. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't emotionally there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I was checked out, and so I'm not sure that Brett ever really had an opportunity to grieve the loss of his dad. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I think that with all the changes that were going on in the family business, and um, that made it tough for him. Um, good, bad, ugly, whatever it is, it's it's hard to, to see changes, and it's hard sometimes hard to accept. And I think that the best thing for him was to step back. And um, sometimes you're forced to step back. Sometimes you're wh whatever the situation is. I think that he made the right decision, and Brett made that decision all on Brett's own, mm -hmm. um, regardless of thoughts or whatever. Brett made that decision. And he made that decision based upon other things. And so with that being said, um, I think that it was that year off was good for him. Get time to reflect and feel and let all those emotions kind and of... And grow. Mm -hmm. I think he did a lot of growing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, rekindling his passion and... You know, although, because Brett was in Texas growing up. He was here on the weekends. He was here during the summers with his dad. Um, but I think that, I don't really think he had a lot of time to reflect on so many changes that come so fast with losing his dad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they played golf together. They wrote together. Everything kind of revolved around him. And... Um, Mm -hmm. when that's gone that's a hard yeah, definitely what, what's the new normal for us and how do we act what and how is do we operate normal? yes and and it was hard on our hard on our kids mm -hmm. um, there's still some things that are still hard on them 
um, when they have to explain that, you know, because there's people that, that don't know that Brett, that now they know, but there would be times that people did not know that Brett was n not still employed at the factory. Mm -hmm. And people would ask the girls, hey, can we bring our class and come let your dad do a tour? That was hard on them. Mm -hmm. Because the family dynamics had changed, and as a you know fifth and sixth grader, how do you say that? How do you explain that? And um, it wasn't their place. Mm -hmm. It wasn't their place to have to explain that. Um, so that's where Brett and I had to figure out. Okay, then what are the right decisions for our family? What are we going to do from here? Do we move from Bowie? Do we stay in Bowie? Because this was home. Mm -hmm. This is home for us, and this is where we will reside. You know, this is where we. This is where we're going to be. be. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, our girls are athletes. They play on the volleyball team. They're cheerleaders. They're very involved in their youth group at church. Um, We've got great friends. They got great friends. Great parents. Mm -hmm. um, they make. You know, they're in junior national junior honor society, and so you know, just bragging on them a little bit. We have an amazing school district here. Mm -hmm. And so many people take that for granted. And we have a great superintendent. We have great teachers. We have... So many people that care. So many people that care do about our children. Mm -hmm. And about our small businesses like yourself. You know, they, they care about our community. And they want what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Bowie's a good um, place. Yeah, Bowie's an amazing it. place to raise your children. No. And I always think it's important because, you know, I grew up in Bowie. Um, been here all my life. And I think a lot of small business owners in our community have grown up in Bowie. So we don't necessarily appreciate what, if you've moved to Bowie, you've been here 10 years, and you've experienced other places, you don't exactly. always appreciate what our community offers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because you don't have anything to compare it to. Yep. It's the norm. Yep. Exactly, yeah. Um, but when you see other places, you're like, well, that's not way every other they place did. is. Yeah. Right. We've been, we've been, and you know, it's honestly, the business has been welcomed with open arms. The city um, has been great. Uh, Brad and Deanne Sherman at oh, Kimber uh, Creek. Mm -hmm. he, if I have a question or, or anything. If I need anything. So... I mean, I literally, I just, I, I just literally yell across the way and he's over here. You know, and he mm -hmm. fixes or whatever. Um, the, the, the man that, that redid our whole building, John Hoke. I mean, I couldn't even ask for some. I mean, I literally just pick him. I have him on speed dial. Mm -hmm. Leslie over at uh, Pecan Street Cafe. For our grand opening, I mean, we had a big, it's like, I'll do big, big barbecue I'll do shindig, that. and she's mm -hmm. like, "I'll do this and I'll do this," and you it's know, like a big family, they, you know? they've mm -hmm. been a family yeah. to us, and they all have hats now, mm -hmm. and they they will continue to always be lifelong family to us, not just friends and customers, but mm -hmm. they're family to us now. Mm -hmm. And so, but you know, back to um, the changes. I think that Brett grew as a person and as an adult. And as a business owner, and um, you don't have a choice. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you don't have a choice, you you, or you be, figure it out. Kind of like kicking the deep end yeah. and say you better swim because yeah. yeah, or you're gonna drown. <laughs> Pretty uh -huh. much. I mean, and you know, Brett hey, Brett would always say, "Dad says if you never swing the bat, you're never gonna hit a home run." Mm -hmm. Swing that bat. And so there was so many days that I was scared to death, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm totally treading unknown waters. You know, at the time, mm -hmm. and um. And I still ask, there's things I still learn every day about that business that I have to ask Brett. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You know, because mm -hmm. I take care of the back end of the things. And so well, with she that, does all back end. She does the orders. She does, she did the design, all this stuff. She does so much mm -hmm. and has done so much. There were days that we literally wanted She's to the kill one each that, other too. Yeah, so I was going to ask that. How, how is it, you know, being in business together? Because, yeah. I mean, for the most part, you're together a lot. You oh, run business yeah. together. Yeah. Um, you know, how does... <clears throat> I, I'm sure there's there's times where you don't agree and you get irritated at each other. Because not only oh, yeah. marriage, but then you are business partners too. Yeah, so it's... He's time. a little bit like his dad. Because he gets his mindset and you are not going to change him. I, he is like a stubborn mule and I'm just... Oh, yeah. She's the worry war. I'm the one that's like, she goes, I don't know. It's just, that's pretty scary, though. It'll work. Yeah, it'll, do it. work. it'll be yeah. fine. It'll all work out. And she goes, but that's, it needs to. That's how problematic it's supposed to be. It'll be fine. It, you know, it ain't nothing but a thing. It'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm fretting and worrying. And sometimes I just make decisions without asking him because I know his answer. So I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and for the most part. But we're together 24-7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. Well, bigger about, like, if I do something... 
Like she, like last week, she was gonna do something, do something, and uh, she's busy all the time. So I did it, you know. And then she's like, "Well, why did you do it that way?" Well, I have gave you two weeks to do it. Now you're mad to me about <laughs> you doing did it, it the way I did it. Yeah. So that those are some things. Those are some of the things that yeah, we. Yeah. But for the most part, I wouldn't pick anybody else to do it. Oh no, mm-hmm. it's fun. I mean, because you know, a lot of people will say, "Oh, I mean, I guess you could tell your attorney story." When he was doing the papers and he was like, we were doing like the business part of it. And he's like, okay, so Brett, you know, is this. Oh yeah. He's like, Hey, you know, or. Are you like, do you. Are you, is this going to be 50, 50 or. Is this <laughs> like, is this like a 50, 49 yeah, like, or like. I don't know. It's, it's both of us. Uh-huh. It's a 50, 50 deal. Yeah. So yeah. 50, 50 eagerly so making. So yeah. paper, it is a 50, 50 deal. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I wouldn't know any other way. I mean, because no. really it's about, she does about 90% of it. And I do 10, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. No, that's not So you're getting the good end of the deal. Yeah, I get uh-huh. the good end. No. And we have fun. We, have fun. we do. I mean, there are days that we're like, you know, afterwards I think, oh God, and I have to go home to him. You know, <laughs> but no. Uh, for, for the, I mean, really, I feel like we've both grown and we've both come a long ways. And mm-hmm. like I said, I was totally treading some unknown waters. Mm-hmm. And I still do. And I think when you quit learning is when you better get out of a business. Mm-hmm. You're always learning. You're, You're always, always learning. something you can do better mm-hmm. or different. You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, but our goal is, is will always be uh, customer service and building your legacy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's our big slogan for is live your legacy. But I think it's important that, you know, all the changes that happened in the last four years, the Maddox legacy, your dad taught you all those years, and that, I think that's a legacy. Absolutely. When you spend years teaching for when those moments of hard times, you can rely on what was taught to start something new. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because your it's not always going to continue. a lesson, you know, that mm-hmm. he taught you the whole, you know, we did this, we did that, we did that. Well, why did we do that that way? And I can go back and look and see what I did, and I wish now that I even learn more mm-hmm. you know behind the scenes stuff but it's yeah i was you've got some great mentors too people oh, yeah. that were in the business with you totally. left and went out on their own and i can call and do you know and like if we get busy like we have big weekends and stuff i have a lot of hat shaped buddies that come help out They're and, you yeah. need me to come and help you yeah. you know i'll be there you just tell me when and, yeah. and people that have been in the business for a long time and uh one of Brett's really great friends that uh, was, he worked for Brett's dad for many years. Um, he went out on his own, he built his own hats, but he's been one of Brett's lifelines through the, through all of this. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say there's two of them yeah. and lifeline and definitely can pick up and pick the phone up. And if we don't know the answer, they, they should. They, they and if mm-hmm. they don't know the answer, they find it mm-hmm. or they help Brett find it. And a lot of our resources that we use have come from contacts that they have given us. Um, you know, the hat industry is different now than what it's ever been. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really hard. Like, it is so hard for someone just starting out in the business. Like, the big companies, mm-hmm. they're out two and a half years to get a hat. And they want you to pay and before you get the hat, uh-huh. you know, and then wait two and a half years to get them. And that's how it is almost with all the hat. Yeah, big it's, and it's all now. the same. It's not just one. There are, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's a lot of it is the fur, the, fur, from the Ukraine, Ukraine stuff and going mm-hmm. on, the shipments, just the stuff, supply and demand, you know, it everything. Is, and it's just to a point where it's really tough. It's not one person's fault, or it's not just this company or this company. It, it it's it is the whole all industry. Around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. You know. You just, so, so then being a smaller business, a smaller hat company, has it been even more challenging to get? It it has to like do some all of, that. Yeah, because get they're like we're and, not opening new stores. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that's you know, and even knowing the people and doing that stuff and having relationships yeah. with them, they're like, I'm so I want to get help you, but we can't. We just mm-hmm. got two hundred. I would say for the most part, though. People have been over backwards oh, yeah. to help the, us. Mm-hmm. The two companies, you know, uh, are, hand, are handmade hats. Uh, that gentleman and uh, the company that does our straws and our, our other felts have been, oh, I mean, mm-hmm. they have done They've so much family. yeah, mm-hmm. to help us. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they, um, they want to see this success. 
and they want to see our family succeed. Mm -hmm. And they want to, um, they want to know that our girls have something and have a legacy. Mm -hmm. And that is their mission and their goal mm -hmm. is to support us. And, and they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have I mean, to do that. and we were they, blessed. That yeah, they did. We are totally blessed. And it all started out with a phone call one day mm -hmm. and we couldn't get somebody, like, it was hard to get somebody to private label your straw hats. And, um, like, ours has our own sweatbands. Everything in them is private labeled. Mm -hmm. And um, with that being said, when, when I called them and they said, well, you know, we don't, we don't really do that. And I said, well, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. You know, so I got to talking and the lady says, no, wait, wait a minute. What was your name again? And so I, I per, you know, commenced to tell her my name again. And she said, um, hang on a second because I think that Junior probably would want to talk to you. And, I mean, she'd already told me no, like, three times because I was a little... She's persistent. persistent. I was very persistent. <laughs> and I think that's a good business no, lesson. You've got never, to be. Never be scared to ask. Yep. Yes. You've got and to then try. be persistent because yep. eventually you're going to get a yes. Yep. And so when I was persistent with her and then she asked me my name again, she said, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. No, I, I, I think he'd probably want to talk to you. So with that being said, um, he gets on the phone and, and we, we talk and... He he says, well, we don't, you know, we don't really do that. Um, but hang on, hang on, just a second, and maybe ten seconds. He comes back on. He's like, um, you know what? Can you and Brett meet with us? Um, and how quick can you? How quick can you be here? Mm -hmm. We're like, yeah, yeah. And so with that being said, um, a phone call of being told no real quick, mm -hmm. and with the persistence. And with them understanding a, a situation, understanding um, what our goals were, um, commenced to, <laughs> they private labeled our straw hats. Mm -hmm. And they are like family to us. Mm -hmm. And I will forever be grateful for them. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to names and relationships. relationships. And, and one thing, you know, about our... he said, I, I watched Brett grow up in the industry. Mm -hmm. Where the lady in the front wasn't being disrespectful. She just didn't know. Yeah, she just didn't, didn't know. know. Mm -hmm. She didn't know who I was, which nobody knew. I, I'm just Brett's wife, mm -hmm. you know, or I'm Sophie and Lily's mom. Mm -hmm. and that's that's okay. what I'm so That's yeah, all that, I wanted yeah. to be, you know. Uh -huh. Brett's Sophie and Lily's dad, and I'm Sophie and Lily's mom. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, you know, or you're Brett Maddox's wife, and and that's fine. Um, but So she had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so all due respect to her. Um, she was just doing her job, and um, when she asked my name again, I think the last name probably clicked the bell, mm -hmm. and um, when she got him on the phone, um, there really wasn't a question to him. He was going to do whatever he had to do to try to make, help us, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what they did from that point forward, and um, he said, why? Well, you know, we've watched Brett grow up in the industry and really respected his dad and uh, respected his business model and respected um, all, all around businessman. Mm -hmm. And so tell me what we can do to help you. And that's where it went to. And, and, and that's a name and that's the decisions that are made every day that go into the name of saying yes because of that name. Yes. Absolutely. You know, it, it's not, it it, it's, it's years spent yeah. um, working on those, that name and holding it up yeah. to a high integrity and, Absolutely. and a good character. And, Absolutely. And, and, and that's a legacy that carries on. Oh yeah, for sure. The name. Oh, I saw um, that. People can take things away from you, but they can never take your last name mm -hmm. or, or the things that you've learned mm -hmm. and the lessons you were taught and the right lessons that you were taught by your dad. Mm -hmm. you know? And the legacy is you take those and then you pass them on to your daughter. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. um, from spending hours to learn how to shine boots yeah. to Absolutely. starting their own boutique. I mean, that's all legacy of being an entrepreneur, starting small, and starting learning to work for young. somebody else. I think, yep. I think as business owners, we forget that we should serve others. Yep. And Absolutely. I think what better, and right over there, because I look over there, is where you shine boots, but what better way as a business owner to shine somebody else's boots and serve them. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, that is the to greatest yep. thing is to, to serve others. Absolutely. And um, you know, one of our daughters, she's, uh, she can talk about a Bella Hay for an hour. <laughs> it just, yeah, that's just she's what she She's a talker. Is. She's a talker. <laughs> yeah. She's like, she's like this one. <laughs> yeah. And the other one, she's like, um,
I'll do all the computer, I'll manage all the money, and... But really, I don't have a lot to talk about. Yeah, she's like, yeah. but I don't have a lot to talk about to those men that sit down in the boot shaman chair. <laughs> and so she's like, how about if I do all the drop-offs? So like the judge and, you know, the DA and a few of them have dropped off, you know, uh, shoes for them to shine. Mm -hmm. They can and come back and pick so he's like, up. oh, I'll do those and I'll shine all those so that then they can come back and pick them up. And Lily's like, okay, well, I'll do the ones that come in here. So they've got their own little business model worked and, out. And they're twins. They're yep. twins. Yeah. So you're yeah. twins. Uh -huh. And so they have their own little business model worked out, and they know how much money they have to put back to buy their own supplies. We we do we did buy their first set of supplies. Mm -hmm. So then it's up to them. So After that, to that's up to them. If buy their own supplies, out, do their things. And I think that's budget. so important. You know, young kids don't do that anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. learning the business at 13 years old and buying supplies and buying for the clothes and doing that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just a, it's a big, I think it's a great opportunity for them to, in, in their future life, mm -hmm. to start out doing this. Mm -hmm. We pretty much gave them, like, we paid for the first set of boutique clothes, but they have to pay us back. Like, it was mm -hmm. a little loan, so they know exactly how much they have to pay us back. Mm -hmm. So they've not made any money yet off of their clothes because they they're paying pay back. Us back. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the, the boot shine and deal, that was... We got them set up, bought their first set, and so from that point forward, that's... So know that when people come in and they get their boot shine, shoe shine, or boutique, they're supporting 13-year-old entrepreneurs. Yes, that, um, Yeah, and I think that's wonderful that, yeah. you know, that, that... That are working hard. Yes, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's not easy. Because if you come in and you buy a hat, you get a complimentary boot shine. Mm. Yeah. So Maddox Legacy has to pay <laughs> Sophie and Lily for that, that set of boots. Mm-hmm. So, to be shy. And they remind us of that real mm -hmm. quick. Yeah. <laughs> How much money we owe them yeah. people have gotten their boots. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Now, now, I have to comment because you said when you uh, buy a hat, you get a free uh, boot shine. Yes. But, Brett, you're not wearing boots. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, so, so you can wear a hat and not boots. Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Like, okay. that's it. Uh, so, I'm can you wear hat, cargo basically. shorts and a hat? Yeah. Okay. Go to I'm the in golf course. Go okay. to the golf course and you'll see a lot okay. of Okay. I used to wear, like in the summer when it's hot, I used to uh, wear a straw hat and my shorts and go golf, you know. What uh -huh. I mean? So, and, yeah. a lot of, and a lot of people do out of the golf course. And yeah. Going so, back to the entrepreneur thing about our daughters, I have to tell a really quick, funny story. So, we did do some contract work for some of our great friends at Resist All. <coughs> that was some of Papa Maddox's. Uh, lifelong colleagues and friends, and because they're all in the industry, they're all you know, in the industry different and companies, all but you're all buddies. Mm -hmm. you see yeah. each other all the Everybody time. has the same goals. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, we were at dinner one night uh, with Ricky Bolin and Devin Markham and some of those guys over at Resist All, and he was asking Sophie and Lily, you know, what are you gonna be when you grow up? And Sophie's like, I don't know, you know, I want to be a dentist, I do hair, or I'm, I'm not sure, you know, dermatology. So, I'm not really sure. So Lily, she's like, I'm going to be an attorney. Like, okay. And she's like, and, you know, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And Sophie's like, well, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, too, because we're going to own a business together. Mm -hmm. And Lily's like, well, yeah, I mean, I meant you, too. I mean, we come <laughs> one. Of course. And so Devin said, oh, well, you know, I thought maybe you girls were going to go to school. And then when y'all got, when you got out of college, you guys were going to come work for Resist All. And you know, work for the hat business there, mm -hmm. right? And Lily just, I mean, she stops dead in her tracks and she says, excuse me? And he says, no, I mean, I thought when you graduated college, maybe you'd come to work for me, you and your sister. And she looked him dead in the eyes and she says, for resist all? And he said, yeah. And she said, I won't work for you, but I might own it. <laughs> so. Well, I thought, I thought Ricky Bowen was going to fall this year. And Devin's like, the girl's that's got it. goals. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, so they're very headstrong kids. And they, you know, that year they were 11, and they went to the NFR with us and worked those two yeah. weeks. One sold and one ran the register, and it was nonstop. And they they got awesome. a full dose of 10 days mm -hmm. at the National Finals Rodeo in it Vegas. It doesn't get busier than that, and they did a great job. And we had to get special permission to draw them out of school <laughs> from Blake, and it was a whole rigmarole because they were not in uh, UIL athletic, athletic mm. yet, so we could do that. 
and and I would say probably in that ten days they probably got an education, oh, better education than a semester at school. Oh, absolutely. It, uh, you know, uh, school's important, but I think you know, I think those kind first, of lessons are the first day headed to the booth. We got in a wreck going about. <laughs> we were in a van, and we were in a we were not company, driving. We were like in yeah, a big company van, company. and uh-huh. someone else was driving, and we were hauling the butt, and we came over this hill. And I was like, oh, and I, we all saw it and we we're like, oh my gosh. We were like, stop. Yeah. There's a guy mm-hmm. like this. Stop. And we were on about 50. We hit this guy and the girls, everybody's happy. Everybody had cowboy hats. So all the cowboy hats like flew yeah. to the front of the bus. And, and, and so they hit, that was the first day. And then we were, we were no, set, that was the second, second day. day. The first, first day we were, got a ticket. Yeah, we were setting up and we had just one vehicle and there's about 10 of us. So we got in there. And we were, we're all trying, about seven of us piled in one dually and seven of us piled in the other one <laughs> in Las Vegas. Yeah, and this motorcycle cop pulled us over. He's like, what What are you guys doing? Get out of the vehicle. Yeah, like, yeah, so we had to get out. Some had to get he's out like, and walk. Did not have seatbelts on? We were like, oh, they were mom the, and dad of the year award. Yeah. I mean, we weren't even driving. We were just, and we so, were going and, two blocks, mm-hmm. literally That two was blocks. the first two days. And then, of course, what you see in Vegas, I mean, them girls. Yeah, Ooh, they, they got an education. They got an education, <laughs> all right, yeah. But they, it gave them a, a true taste of the, the hat industry. Mm-hmm. And from that point forward... Um, they're excited about it. They've been super excited. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'll, they'll still say, you know, Daddy, this is what I want to do, or, you know, I want to do this, or... And he's like, okay, you know, because this is going to be your business at one, you know, some point in your life. And they're like, when you and mom retire, and Brett's like, (laughs) we'll never retire (laughs) ever because even Brett's dad wasn't retired. But, Mm -hmm. you know, he's like, we'll never retire. I think when you're self-employed, you always have your hands in the business. Always. Yes. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, they have have definitely bigger hopes and dreams for Maddox Legacy than, Mm -hmm. I think Brett and I have big dreams, but they have the way beyond you know, big and magnificent and um, catering to everybody in the United States. And, mm-hmm. I mean, they have all these dreams. And and you know what? I hope and pray that all their dreams come true. I and, I, and I think that's important as parents that we allow the, our kids to dream, dream. and have those oh, big yeah. dreams. Oh, absolutely. And for them, and I think it's great that they can see that. Absolutely. They're not limited by by that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, your, your store is not open every day. So my question is a small business, so I'm always interested. So you're open Wednesday through Saturday. Saturday, right? yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? You why are you not open, you know, I, six I days just, a week? I just don't think that right now we need to be open that much. Uh, Sunday is not very busy. Monday is not, I mean, everybody's pretty much closed. Tuesday is a possibility, but we're going to start out. We didn't want to start out opening Monday, Tuesday, and then cutting it back. Mm-hmm. You know, we wanted to start out with the prime days, prime hours, and then expand. Mm-hmm. Um, but we think so right now. Oh, uh, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I thought the answer was going to yeah, be. That I like that, I want some family well, time. Yeah. <laughs> I think because I mean, you even said I'll never be open on Sundays. That's mm-hmm. our family day. Oh, that's mm-hmm. our family. We day. go to church, yeah. and then you know. Our and with our store, you know, when Dad had the store in Fort Worth, we used to be closed Sundays and Mondays. Mm-hmm. You know, now we're open. Mon- they were open Mondays, but Sundays and Mondays were kind of the time to get together. With Tuesdays is kind of Brett and I's day here mm-hmm. by ourselves with the doors locked and inventory inventory mm-hmm. and talking about okay what are our goals for the week and what do we need to redo and who do we need prepping, to talk to and you know. prepping for the week and because we're not just juggling mm-hmm. a business we have two very busy children and, and i think that's two good lessons you point out one is you still have a family no. You still have a life outside of the business. Absolutely. Another is that as small business owners, we want to open the floodgates and be open all the time for customers. Yeah. But that's not always the best thing because it's easier to expand. Absolutely. I always say when you start to see a business changing hours, you know there's problems. Yeah. A changing yeah. hours as in we're switching days, we're yeah. doing this, yeah. we're expanding, Shorten we're back. shortening. Yeah. You know, then we then I always say that's the first sign of a business yeah. in trouble. Absolutely. When you start out, here's our hours, and then as business needs will expand yep. um which which i think small businesses often don't do yeah um they will i'll scale back and i'll yeah. start start low yeah. and then yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. and that was a big thing with us is trying to decide you know in the beginning because brett's like no i think we need to be open you know 10 to 6 tuesday through saturday and then i got to tell i'm like 
I know, but we've got kids that got ball games. We've got, you know, so what are you going to do? Just put, yeah, there are going to be days that we live in a small town. We live in a small community. We may have to stick a sign on the door and be like, hey, sorry, Sophie and Lily's got an out of, you know, out of town ball game. We got to go, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, we wanted to accommodate around our family. Mm-hmm. And um, our line of communication is always open. When somebody right. calls our business, it rings to my personal cell phone. Mm. And just like this last weekend, I mean, Sunday, we had a buddy of ours. Saturday. That, Saturday, we had a buddy of, of ours. And an ambassador. Uh, get inducted to the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to be there, and he asked us to be there with him. So we went and we watched Mickey get inducted to the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. Yeah. And then... Um, Kudos to you, Mickey. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. then uh, Sunday, um, so we put it on our door, but Sunday, one of our other brand ambassadors... Um, Harmon Performance Forces. Yeah. Brandon Harmon had a clinic and he had people wanting hats. So we hooked up the trailer and Nicole brought hats to him. And then I shaped up a hat for a guy here on Sunday that just called. And then Monday, yesterday, one of my mom's good friends was coming through, but she had to leave first thing Monday morning. We met her here at 7 o'clock yesterday Mm -hmm. morning. And shaped up a hat, you know. Mm -hmm. So our hours are there, but if something, somebody needs something above and beyond. We're a phone call away, you know. And what are your normal hours, Wednesday through Saturday? Uh, Wednesday through Saturday. Wednesdays Wednesdays are 10 to 6. Uh, Thursdays 10 to 5, Fridays 10 to 5, and Saturdays 10 to 2. Yep. Booby seems to shut down about 2 or 3 o'clock on Saturdays. Yeah, because if they're going out somewhere or something, Mm -hmm. you know, so really, um, you know, and we felt like our girls deserve a weekend, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, excited about our kids going to a four-day school week. Yeah. Uh, They're super excited. Because they'll not only, they'll have down days, but their down days, mm-hmm. they're uh, already counting their money. Because mm-hmm. they're they working. Work. Yeah, they got mm-hmm. Friday yeah. now. Yeah, they're like, Friday. Oh, does that mean we get to work on Fridays? It's like we get to, so they've got all these hopes and mm-hmm. the things that they're going to do for their boutique on the um, during the summer of, you know, inviting their friends over and doing all these. Yeah, you know, they've got all kinds of ideas. And they've got, and I, great, I hope that they they, they'll 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 do it. Mm-hmm. Not it, down my mind. And, and do y'all have a website? We do. Maddoxlegacy.com. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, same thing on Facebook and same thing on Instagram. Um, our business consultant, she actually is our social media media manager, so she does all the social media. Mm-hmm. Um, we are not the greatest. And again, that's another point to small businesses: make your brand consistent again off. All platforms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it can be fine. So there's no dashes, dots. Yeah. Well, on this one, you can find me here. Yeah, yeah, it's or different yeah. or something. Maddox yeah. Legacy all across, well, the, yeah, everything. All across the board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so just to finish up, one final question. I'll let each of you answer this. Um, what makes, since you're not, since 10 years in Bowie, a um, little less coming and going, um, not born and raised here, but came here, but yet I feel like it's your hometown because you made a choice to stay. I'll ask each of you, what makes it, I'll ask Brett you first, what, what makes Bowie your hometown? I, I think just the people, the people, um, the friendships I've built, um, I think that that is, and the smallness of it, you know, it's still little enough that you can have contact with everybody, um, but it's growing, and it's growing in the right direction, you mm-hmm. know, and like fixing up the buildings and doing that kind of stuff. So I'm proud of where it's headed, and I just, I love the feel of it. We're, you know, 45 minutes from the Metroplex, 45 minutes from Wichita Falls. It's just a great place for me, and I love where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And, Nicole, what makes Bowie um, my hometown? A lot of it is um, I think about uh, our girls are happy here. I mean, I grew up in a really, really, really small town, um, cheerleader, athlete, same thing, you know, everybody knew everybody. You go to the grocery store, you, you don't just run in and get what you need and come out. You got to stop and talk to everybody. Um, but seeing the support that people have had for us with our business um, has made Bowie even more home than what it was before. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that being said, um, the town, the school system, our superintendents, our teachers, 
small business owners, yourself, I mean, everybody that wants to see everybody succeed. Mm -hmm. And we do our business in Bowie. I, I mean, we do business in Bowie. Well, I'm not saying I don't go to the Metroplex and, yeah. and do business like, you know, our girls are Lululemon. You know, mm -hmm. it's the whole craze and whatever. I'm but not saying I don't. Everything we can buy, we buy. Everything we yeah. can buy, mm -hmm. we buy in the <coughs> um, You know, when we remodeled the store, we, you know, ace. I mean, we could have, but no. I, I want to keep our business local. Same mm -hmm. thing as I want the locals here. If they can keep their business local, we we would love it. Um, Bowie will always be home. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and just like one thing that Nicole said, everybody that has supported us and wholeheartedly want us to succeed, it just had our backs and been makes, in our corner. Makes mm -hmm. It's just a difference. good. It's a good town, and it's good people, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Brett and Nicole, for joining Absolutely. me today. Yes, thank um, you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, yes, you're sir. welcome. I'm excited to see um, the Maddox legacy. I, I think names are so important um, in business, and I love the name. I love the story behind the name, um, and that it's you can already see it's being passed on to the next generation above and beyond. Um, and with their hard work, it's going to be passed on the next. And that's what a legacy is. Um, and I think so many times as small business owners, sometimes it stops with us. Oh, you know, it doesn't always get passed on. Yeah. Um, so I think those are great lessons your dad taught you. Um, now you get to raise your kids and your family um, with those lessons, um, which really I think makes would make your dad proud to be uh, oh, the Maddox no. legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's all I so. say. Come, come get a hat and live your legacy. And our doors are always open, mm -hmm. regardless of buying a hat or not. You know, if somebody just wants to come in and sit down, and we always have westerns rolling and. And there's yes, no shortage of that. conversation. That's oh, right. no. That's no. Right. There's no shortage of conversation around there. No. Yeah. There's always plenty to talk about. Yeah. That's right. So, but exactly. thank you, Nicole and Brett, thank for joining so me today. Absolutely. And thank you. And thank you to each of you for stopping by and visiting us with us today on My Hometown. We're looking forward to seeing you around My Hometown.